I'm Emil Shachev and uh, I'm here in a Fit Show studio to do my segment on the nutritional part of Secrets of the Pros. Nutrition is the most important part in bodybuilding, I would say. Even so, that uh, it's more important than training alone. But besides the bodybuilding, I do want to say that right nutrition is what uh, is important for every human being. And uh, many times bodybuilders don't get the credit when the credit is due. I would claim this, that uh, it's 100% certain in my mind, bodybuilders do have the healthiest diet. Why? We do pay close attention to all the macronutrients, how much protein, carbohydrates, fat, calories we take uh, throughout the day. And if you really think about it, combining all these nutrients in a small frequent meals throughout the day, bodybuilders do have what I would call ideal, optimal diet uh, for, for human race. So uh, I'm going to start with the basics, just to introduce the basic nutritional points to all of you, uh, with the intention to, uh, at the end, uh, make precise nutritional diet plan for each and every of you guys. I understand we are all different individuals with different needs, but everything boils down to pretty much uh, the same. We have a goal, we're going to prescribe something that uh, is going to basically get you to your goal. So let's start with the basic. Macronutrients that we have are uh, uh, three uh, uh, basic macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Carbohydrates and fat are energy delivering nutrients and only protein is a building nutrient, building material. So I'm going to just make little remarks here. This would be protein and carbohydrates and fat on the other side. This is energy, and only protein is to build. Now when I talk about uh, building and protein, a lot of you would think right away, of oh, building muscle. That's not so. Protein is uh, essential for the whole body. Everything we have, skin, hair, muscles, bones, organs, everything, enzymes, hormones, everything is made out of protein. So it's so essential that I would say it's absolutely most important. And really, protein, in essence, the word means most important. Carbohydrates and fat, as I said, is only energy. You cannot absolutely build ounce of muscle from carbohydrates or fat. This is just energy nutrients. So take it as energy demand requires. We take these two depending on demand. If we spend a lot of calories, we need a lot of energy, that's when we have high energy. But protein is most important, and I would say there is a big misconception as uh, everybody reads this FDA recommendation. So RDA, recommended daily allowance for protein, is so minimum that I would say it's not even enough for uh, mice, not a human being. And uh, when experts, nutrition experts, uh, uh, confronted with this, they would basically say, hey, we are only saying that's minimal requirement for survival, so not optimal. And many clients that come to me and ask me for uh, what I think of RDA for protein uh, and say, why is like this? I would always emphasize this is minimal for survival. That's you know, very important to, to remember. Optimal intake is something completely different. So uh, what would I say is optimal for everybody right off the bat, not even the bodybuilders or athletes, just average person, I would say it's one gram of protein per pound of body weight. This is what I stand behind it 100%. One gram per pound minimum. For uh, bodybuilders, I go as far as even two grams per pound. Now, I have to explain here uh, why, what's the reason for that. If you take a 200-pound person, and you would take, let's say, some bodybuilder, 200 pounds, muscular, very active, with a goal to build as much muscle mass as possible, or 200-pound average person that really doesn't have that kind of uh, goals in mind. And uh, if you take the bodybuilder training maybe twice a day, very intensely, and the other person is uh, sitting on a desk and do some computer work, if you listen to RDA, uh, for what Food Drug Administration uh, recommends to us, these two gentlemen should have the same intake of protein. Well, you know, that's for me a big nonsense, because of course, 
a bodybuilder that needs to build muscle tissue, and this is the only building nutrient, obviously needs much more than a person that doesn't have this as a goal. Another thing is with intense training that uh, bodybuilders do, we break down so much uh, muscle tissue, lean tissue, that basically is nothing but a protein, amino acids. So as bodybuilders in a, uh, intense training are breaking down muscle tissue and losing amino acids, they obviously require much more than average person, as I mentioned, 200 pound guy that really doesn't have a, that goal in mind. So one gram per pound of uh, body weight, I would say is for everyone. Every, each and every one of you that is uh, watching this DVD is thinking about what is the uh, most appropriate amount. Take it from me, one gram, regardless if you're a guy that wants to build muscle, lose weight, maintain what you want. Healthy intake of protein is one gram per pound, period. Uh, I'm going to use a 200 pound as a reference, as uh, it's easy to calculate. 200 grams of protein for each person would be uh, only 800 calories from a protein sources. One gram of protein is four calories. So if you take that uh, 200 pound guy would need to take uh, uh, 200 grams of protein, that would be 800 calories coming from protein daily. As you see, that's very low caloric intake. Uh, ideally, I would say that uh, uh, this uh, 200 grams of protein should be divided is as many uh, small frequent uh, uh, intakes, small you know, frequent meals. If you have a 200 grams of protein in one sitting, that's abundance of protein, too much at once, and yeah, there will be a, a lot of trouble trying to absorb, digest, uh, assimilate, process, eliminate, and so on. 200 grams, yes, is too much in one sitting. Uh, what are we getting by small frequent intakes? Let's say minimum five a day. If you're taking a 200 grams of protein in five small uh, meals, there will be 40 grams of protein at the time. 40 grams for breakfast, uh, snack, lunch, another snack, and dinner. That would ensure several things. First, uh, that we have a small frequent uh, feeding that would give us certain kind of amino acids from various proteins that we're taking. They would ensure constant flow of amino acids into the bloodstream. So whenever our body needs protein for, let's say, muscle, it would have available for some other physiological or metabolic needs. It would take for, let's say, some organ, for hair, for red blood cells, for whatever. Whatever is physiological or metabolic need of the body, if is looking for protein, we must have it available. If you don't have it available, what happens is body have to take it from within. So it has to break down some tissue to get those amino acids needed. That's, uh, uh, in my opinion, and uh, I hope you would agree, nonsense. If we can have amino acids available, why not? Well, we would ensure that at all times you would have a sufficient amount of amino acids if you take one gram of protein per pound, 200, guys would, uh, 200 pound guy would take 200 grams of protein daily. Uh, five meals, 40 grams at a time, let's say egg whites in the first meal, chicken in the second meal, steak, uh, fish, or whatever source uh, throughout the day uh, that person would have, would give us amino acids from all those protein sources, and then we're gonna have uh, available in the bloodstream, so whenever it's needed, it's gonna be there. Very important thing, because if uh, uh, somebody builder wants to build a lean tissue and have a tremendous workout, phenomenal workout, he gave that stimulation that is needed you know, for muscle to grow, but if we don't have a building material, enough you know, protein, muscle is not gonna get bigger, as simple as that. Uh, I always like to give that one example is, uh, if you have a uh, hundred guys that would like to build a house, and they come with the most advanced technology to construction, uh, for construction to build a house, and they do not have enough building material, bricks or wood, 100 guys are gonna look at each other and do nothing. They can't even build a house for a mice. 
And another term, if there is two guys that have a willpower and uh, they want to build a house and they have all the material needed, eventually they're going to slowly build not just the house, but even the biggest mansion. Uh, so what I'm trying to say here, if we have enough protein, our body can, absolutely can, build anything we uh, think about. For a bodybuilder, that would be a lot of muscle tissue. If we uh, don't have enough, that will not happen. So all that hard work that we did in a, uh, during a training on a DVD, Secrets of the Pros, on a fit show that you could see, every workout that I presented to you, not just that it's going to be ineffective, it's going to be even worse. If you train like this, you're going to absolutely break down the muscle tissue. You're going to lose all those amino acids. If you don't replenish it, you're going to get smaller than previously. So with my training program that I uh, designed for you, without proper nutrition, I'm doing very bad favor for all of you guys. You're going to lose muscle size. And that's what happened to me in the beginning of my career as I trained with a huge intensity, with enthusiasm, believing that just training is important. I don't care about nutrition. We just eat whatever is served. I got smaller. After three months of training, about three hours a day, I actually got smaller. So make sure that one gram of protein per pound of uh, body weight is your absolute minimum. A uh, 200 pound guy would have a 200 grams of protein. Uh, why uh, small frequent meals? As I said, first, that would ensure constant flow of amino acids. Secondly, a lot of protein needs different time to be processed and digested. For red meat, some kind of uh, beef, it takes 24 hours for a body to break down the uh, protein from a, a beef. 24 hours. For some uh, uh, chicken, for example, that has a, you know, protein uh, within a chicken, would take about uh, six to seven hours to be broken down and uh, we would have amino acids available. Uh, fish is about five hours. Uh, milk products, uh, you know, diary between hour and a half, two and a half hours. You know, coming down to, uh, let's say, whey protein, there's a lot of uh, supplemental whey protein powders, whey uh, concentrate, isolate, as I say, different kinds. They, it takes about 20 minutes to get amino acids from that source of protein. But the bottom line is, Anything that we have, any kind of protein, eventually our body is going to break down to the amino acids, either free form individual amino acids or peptides, you know, bonded amino acids. You know, when we have this, that's when our body can process and build various tissues and the muscle that we are looking for. So amino acids are building blocks that we need to build muscle. We must have it available, and the best way to ensure that we have is small, frequent meal throughout the day with at least one gram of protein per, per pound. That's uh, for protein for now. On the other hand, carbohydrates and fat gives us energy. One gram of carbohydrate would give us four calories and uh, fat, one gram of fat would be nine calories. Many times uh, dietitians and uh, actually people that are uh, you know, keeping the diet mostly talk about caloric intake. I take 2,000 calories, 5,000 calories, or whatever. And when I tell them, okay, how much of that is protein carbs? Oh, I don't know, but I take 2,000 calories. 2,000 calories of uh, right nutrients could be the best possible diet. 2,000 calories of whatever is uh, uh, not as efficient. It could be worst possible diet. So calories really don't mean much to me. It's just number at the end of the day when you actually calculate what you're taking. But for example, uh, one gram of carbohydrate has four calories. And if you take, let's say, starchy complex carbohydrate source of, let's say, uh, potato, and it would have uh, um, four ounces about, and it's uh, equal to about 18 grams of, uh, to 20 grams of carbohydrates, that's 80 calories worth of carbohydrates. This is now energy that body can use. And if it's a need for that energy, body can use it very efficiently. And if there is no need for it, your body can convert it and store it. And that's what uh, usually happens with the people that uh, don't pay attention to what nutrients at what times they're taking. If they take too much carbohydrates, 
at a time when they don't, they don't need, this carbohydrate will be stored as a fat. I had a, a many clients before they would virtually have a, almost no fat at all, with the logic that uh, if I don't eat fat, I cannot uh, get fat. And then they, they realize that, uh, quite contrary, they gain a lot of fat. Why? Because they were eating way too much carbohydrates. They had way too much energy. So, as I said, protein is taken in a, a one gram per pound uh, formula. Carbohydrates and fat, individually, uh, it's uh, different with, uh, among all of us. And, uh, uh, if somebody has a tremendous energy output, energy expenditure, of course they need to have a, you know, appropriate intake. Uh, what do I do with the uh, um, carbohydrate intake? I watch somebody's 24-hour activity, and uh, I give my recommendation for amount of carbs according to what that person is going to do throughout the day. So if they're going to wake up at certain time in the morning, let's say 8, and uh, they're gonna be active in the uh, next few hours, then they're gonna have a little bit period of inactivity, then they're gonna have a serious workout, and they're gonna be uh, up uh, quite late at night, for example, and not very active, uh, maybe going to bed at midnight. I would take this period of time and structure carbohydrate and fat intake accordingly. Some Starchy complex carbohydrate in the morning uh, would give us sustained, prolonged energy that the body can use in the next several hours. So I would certainly have some carbohydrate meal in the first uh, meal. Then, as we said here, we are not very active. So here we had either a less demand, so we can have a less carbohydrates than here, or no carbohydrates at all or type of carbohydrate that would give us a different kind of energy. It's, uh, I would say, fibrous complex carbohydrates, uh, let's say some uh, uh, kind of vegetable, that would give us you know, calories per se, because uh, it is caloric value in every vegetable, but there is not very many usable calories, calories that the body is going to use. So uh, at the, uh, immediately before inactive period of time, we can have uh, less energy or, uh, let's say, fibrous carbohydrates that uh, uh, can take us through next couple of hours without us feeling that we are dragging, have no energy. But uh, uh, this way, we ensure that none of this carbohydrate can be converted into the fat. So that would be what I would uh, suggest, uh, some fibrous uh, complex carbohydrate source or no carbs at all. Then we have a serious workout that for that workout we need some tremendous energy. So uh, maybe 45 minutes before that we can have some quick source, not necessarily simple carbohydrates, but uh, easily digestible uh, starchy complex carb that would give us that energy for a serious workout. During the workout we can have either additional energy usually a simple carbohydrate source, sugars, Gatorade with some, let's say, glucose polymers, Vitargo, uh, maltodextrin, uh, glucose dextrose mixed with, let's say, branch chain aminos or something like that. That's supplement that I can talk about later. But yes, at this time, as we have immediate need for energy, we can have some energy. During the training, what happens? As we contract, in every contraction of every repetition for every set of every exercise for every muscle, we do uh, need cellular energy, ATP, and uh, besides cellular energy, uh, adenosine triphosphate, we are using glycogen as a stored source of carbohydrate in a skeletal muscle. We use glycogen as an energy source for our training weight resistance training as anaerobic activity, takes carbohydrate as a primary uh, source of energy and carbohydrates that is either stored in the muscle or available from a dietary uh, carbohydrate intake prior to the workout. So, you know, during that one hour of uh, strenuous physical activity, we deplete our glycogen storage. So immediately after, now we have a logical 
and legitimate reason to replenish what we have lost. And at that time, we can take some simple carbohydrates. Simple, <clears throat> which was contradictory to many uh, experts' beliefs and in bodybuilding, there would be no simple carbohydrate intake for many years because they said there is no need for sugar in bodybuilder, bodybuilder's life. Until uh, uh, not so recently, let's say seven, eight years ago, many experts uh, did realize that replenishing glycogen immediately post-workout is a quite good idea and uh, very uh, logical to be replaced with simple carbohydrate source. Why? Uh, glycogen, which is uh, glucose, carbohydrate glucose stored in the muscle, it's glucose and water. One gram of glucose with 2.7 milliliters of water is uh, stored in a form of glycogen inside the muscle. So what do we need? We need glucose. It's monomer, it's monosaccharide, one molecule, as simple as it gets, one molecule of carbohydrate. Glucose plus water, right? This is the glycogen stored in the muscle. So after the workout, if we go with a, some complex carbohydrate source that our body needs to break down into the glucose, it would take our body so much time to do so. In the meantime, a window of opportunity when our body's physiological preference post-workout is to put all these nutrients right back into the muscle. If it's not there, body is losing that uh, perfect chance. So many people did realize and did agree that that simple carbohydrate should be, it could be used immediately after the workout. Even though some experts would say that glycogen repletion is not some quick one hour uh, thing, it's something that lasts forever. And I went into debates with many actually doctors and phys uh, physiologists about this. And they would say, Milos, uh, glycogen can be replenished third, fourth, fifth, tenth hour after. And uh, there is not really necessarily that you must take it right there and no other time. Well, uh, I experimented with many athletes, and not just me, but uh, several other people, including a friend of mine, uh, Victor Conti from uh, Balco Labs, that did legitimate carbohydrate uh, loading after the uh, training. And top uh, professionals in various sports were having tremendous unbelievable results immediately post-workout replenishing glycogen, being able to uh, continue training just several hours later. So even when you have that window of opportunity, you know, well, let's say you have a two workouts a day, 10 o'clock in the morning and let's say 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you deplete the glycogen in the morning and there's only so many hours in between until the next workout. People that would not do what uh, I'm talking about right now would be absolutely wasted and perform poorly in the second workout. People that would do what I'm preaching here, replenish glycogen immediately, would have tremendous results and second workout would be as effective as first. <clears throat> My point here is just uh, don't be stubborn and just go blindly with, okay, don't take sugars, sugars are, are enemies. Sugars at the right times are best friends. And especially at this time after the workout, it would be most beneficial for all of us to take simple carbohydrate source. So to summarize what I was saying here, I know I'm going a little fast, but I want to tell you as much as I can in a short period of time. Starchy complex carbohydrate in the beginning of the day for a reason of sustained prolonged energy without playing with the blood sugar levels, it's slow, our uh, blood sugar level increase due to uh, polysaccharides. Uh, it's uh, a complex of s uh, molecules of glucose together in uh, uh, two forms of uh, starches, amylose or amylopectin. Uh, anyway, uh, they are giving us slow sustained energy. Our body would break down uh, those bonds between each molecule, so slowly glucose would be coming in the blood as uh, next two, three hours uh, after the uh, complex carbohydrate intake. So first is starchy complex carb, giving us energy for the next few hours. Then we have a fibrous carbohydrates that gives us a little bit of usable energy, 
and mostly fiber that cannot be digested. Now, what does it happen? Let's say that this is a stick of celery. I like to use celery as an example in my seminars because people can uh, associate to. If caloric value of this stick of celery is five calories in, uh, in uh, this one stick, and our body is trying to process this, digest, break it down, assimilate, eliminate, and everything else, our body is going to use more calories, like 10 calories trying to digest five. So this is so-called negative calories, and this is one thing that I say for people that diet, use as much green leafy vegetables as they're going to have so much energy uh, from your body taken to try to digest and process it, that you're going to actually have negative calories. So yes, at that time, uh, inactivity, no need for energy, that's when we take fibrous carbohydrates. Then we're going to have an extreme activity. So we need tremendous amount of uh, usable energy. Prior to that, we use a source of carbohydrate that's going to give us that you know, uh, jolt, that uh, real uh, energy for workout. During the workout, there's another option. We can have it in uh, that workout session. And post-workout is what I'm saying and most important because physiological preference of our body after the workout is to replenish uh, everything that we have lost. Now, simple carbohydrates, glucose, what I was talking about, post-workout causes another very important uh, thing. As glucose, blood sugar, goes into the bloodstream within three minutes. That's exactly how long it takes. After oral intake of glucose, it takes only three minutes for glucose to go into the bloodstream. And if you take a certain amount of um, vitargo or dextrose or anything containing immediate uh, uh, glucose, it would shoot a blood sugar level sky high, which a lot of doctors would say it's not a good idea. Well, post-workout is a different story. That's when we do need high blood sugar because high blood sugar is going to trigger, trigger a pancreas to release insulin. Insulin has to dispose all these glucose molecules because it's a high blood sugar. So insulin is released in the, in the blood and now would take all the nutrients available, which would be glucose from that simple carbohydrate source. And if we are smart, that high protein intake throughout the day is going to give us all the amino acids in the bloodstream. So when we do that uh, post-workout sugar, we would find available amino acids plus available glucose plus available several other supplements I'm going to talk about. Insulin is storage hormone. It's most anabolic hormone. It would take the nutrients and store into the cells. Now, what cells are going to be affected? Post-workout, what did we just accomplish? Each muscle fiber that we train, each cell of a, each fiber is going to be emptied. So now we have empty space screaming to be replenished. So muscle that we just trained is going to be exactly the most affected. If we take simple carbs, with all the amino acids and other uh, valuable nutrients that we need, it's going to be shoved right back into the muscle cell of a muscle fiber of the muscle that we just trained. Whoever does this, they're going to see immediate response and tremendous results. Our body is uh, the biggest computer. It's a surviving mechanism. If uh, something affects our body and our body is not in a normal state, our body wants to supercompensate. So let's uh, give you one example that many of you can probably be familiar with. If you drink some amount of water, we are hydrated normally, and then we start dehydrating. For whatever reason, we don't drink water. It's, water is not available. Or take some supplements or take you know, some pharmaceuticals. That makes us drop water. So we get in dehydrated state. The hydrated state is not normal to the body. So once water is available, body starts replenishing, but then it doesn't come just to the normal amount of water that we are holding. 
our body starts supercompensating, holding more and more and more to the point of edema. A uh, uh, body holds so much water, that's that so-called rebound, because it senses the danger. It was normal before, now dehydrated, and a body doesn't want to just go to the normal, but to prevent dehydration from happening again, body puts a little bit more. And then, after a few days, when they realize there's no more danger, body releases that water and comes back to normal. Well, that principle of supercompensation is something that bodybuilders should use constantly. And uh, in this sense, at the training, as we deplete glycogen, ATP, amino acids, our body would supercompensate, put more ATP, put more amino acids, and put more glycogen back in the same muscle fibers due to that incredible power, storage power of insulin caused by uh, simple carbohydrates post-workout. So that's the uh, uh, logic behind that. Do not be afraid of taking uh, simple carbohydrates post-workout for that reason. And to uh, summarize uh, uh, our carbohydrate intake, we take starchy complex carbohydrates in the beginning, fibers when we don't need energy, again some starchy carbs prior to the workout, simple carbohydrates during and post-workout. And then after this, again, we don't need much energy, so we have no carbohydrates at all. That's one very good idea. Or again, fibrous carbohydrates at the end of the day. Most of you guys are going to ask, well, I heard that I shouldn't eat after 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., whatever number. This is, again, some myth that goes around that do not eat after a certain hour because you're going to get fat. Not because hour is important. It's activity that is important. If you're going to be inactive, you don't need energy, you don't take energy. So at nighttime, we have no carbohydrates at all or fibers. That would be carbohydrate intake. <clears throat> now, due to... Um, let's say, a popularity of Atkins diet, ketogenic diet, and some other, uh, there will be no carbohydrates allowed. Carbohydrates are enemies. Uh, a lot of people are doing this um, uh, very low carbohydrate or no carbohydrate, using a fat as an energy source. And some people had tremendous results, and I don't want to say it's a wrong diet. But as a, a nutrient, uh, what is the uh, safer a nutrient, carbohydrates or fat? Well, fat, especially saturated uh, kinds, and then bad trans fats and other kinds of fats that are not essential fatty acids needed to our body, the other fat is not really needed. So I don't say that that would be preferable source of energy. No. Some fat, yes, absolutely, it's needed. And usually in a protein sources that we have throughout the day, we would already have some hidden fat. Only important thing for fat is include some essential fatty acids. The omega-3, omega-6 essential fats, and then there are some other important fats, omega-9. Uh, there are some monounsaturated, polyunsaturated fats that our body needs, and it's good physiologically. It would use, uh, that's one thing. But having a too much fat, unnecessary fat, unhealthy fat, is something that nobody needs. So if you choose your diet, and I'm going to help you at the end structure exact diet to each and every one of you that is watching this DVD, before we finish, I'm going to have exact diet for every one of you. Uh, fat intake would be, again, according to physical activity. If you spend X amount of energy, we're going to have to have an X amount of calories. If you spend Y or Z, we're going to have to find the exact amount. But fats, I would just uh, want to say, as an energy source, it's not as healthy as carbohydrates. That's why my preference is uh, protein and uh, carbohydrates. However, I do have uh, several clients that very successfully follow low carbohydrate, higher fat intake but fat has to be very specific. So uh, I'm going to have a one-minute break to uh, get uh, 
something going here, and we're going to come right back for a, a next segment on the nutrition, Secret of the Pros, by Milos Archiv. And we are back from intermission uh, in the process of designing program, caloric intake for each and every one of you. I want to explain a couple more things that are very important. We're all different individuals, and I'm sure you heard about these different body types. So uh, there are several body types, but I'm going to just uh, mention the most important, ectomorphic, endomorphic, and mesomorphic type. Uh, to best describe and easiest for you to uh, understand who, which body type uh, you might be, uh, ectomorphic is, uh, let's think of a basketball player, uh, skinny, tall, uh, you know, has a very hard time gaining weight, uh, that's ectomorphic. Usually has a very high metabolism and uh, pretty much anything that he uh, does, no matter how much he eats and so on, he can never gain weight. Those are those uh, uh, hard gainers, ectomorphic uh, uh, people. Then we have uh, exactly the opposite, endomorphic. Think of somebody that is a little overweight. Uh, usually they can, uh, and that's what they say, they can drink water and gain weight in sense of uh, uh, very little calories can still make them uh, increase their body weight. And uh, in a finally mesomorphic, and that's very muscular, think of a bodybuilders with a, you know, uh, a large bone structure, you know, very thick uh, uh, bones and broad shoulders and so on. You know, that is mesomorphic. So we have a variation of those types. You can hear sometimes uh, I'm ectomesomorph or endomesomorph and so on and so on. Whatever uh, your type is, uh, regardless, we can still find the best diet for you. You're talking about protein intake, carbohydrate and fat. We established that everybody needs uh, at least one gram of protein per pound, so that's a start for everyone. Now when we go into the uh, uh, specific uh, body types, and we talk about that one gram of protein uh, per uh, pound of body weight. Ectomorphic possibly need more. And that's what I would say, start first with ectomorphic. If you are a hard gainer and you have a hard time uh, putting the muscle mass, try immediately with a higher protein intake. So for ectomorph, I would go already with 1.5 and quite possibly even as much as 2 grams of protein per pound. This is the amount of protein that I also recommend to competitive bodybuilders. This whole uh, Secrets of the Pros uh, diet nutritional segment, it's uh, uh, for average uh, sedentary person, not necessarily competitive bodybuilder. So when I said that one gram of protein per pound of body weight, that was not only for bodybuilders, that is for everyone. Now for competitive bodybuilders, we need a higher protein intake and for ectomorphs, one and a half to two grams of protein per uh, pound of body weight. Endomorph, uh, as uh, I said before, has uh, trouble losing weight. And still for the endomorph, I would keep very high protein intake and then reduce other macronutrients, carbohydrates and fat. So even for endomorph, I would suggest one and a half grams of protein uh, per pound of body weight. Not necessarily two, but one and a half. Uh, as you can imagine, when we uh, set the diet, endomorphic people would have a low fat intake and low carbohydrate intake, so something has to be high. And the safest nutrient out of those three would be protein. So one and a half gram of protein per pound of body weight, even for endomorph. Mesomorphic uh, people are fortunately uh, very muscular. It's the best type if you want to be a competitive bodybuilder. We have even uh, uh, eight-time Mr. Olympia, Lee Haney, who would claim that uh, throughout his career, he only, he only needed one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And Lee Haney is very well respected, uh, great athlete, uh, great gentleman, wonderful person uh, all around, but he was very uh, well known for his nutritional knowledge. I attended some of uh, his seminars and uh, I talked to him personally uh, many times. Um, he believes that if you're mesomorphic and uh, you train very intense, 
you can uh, get away with one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and he did, winning eight Mr. Olympia titles. So I don't want to say it's impossible. I would not exclude that possibility. So mesomorphs can try with the one gram of protein per pound, and if they're not getting uh, desirable results, then they can increase maybe to one and a half or in between. So protein intake for those three types I mentioned here, and I wrote it <clears throat> during the break. We were taking that 200 pound person. And uh, as I said, we started with 200 grams of protein. Carbohydrate, I uh, decided to put uh, like this example between 100 and 500 grams you know, for different body types. And fat in between 30 and 100 grams also depending on the body type. So here was an endomorphic person. You have a trouble losing weight, I would give you 100 grams of carbohydrates for start. So each and uh, every one of you that is watching this DVD and you're designing your nutrition program right now, if you believe you are endomorphic, start with the 200 grams of protein and the 100 grams of carbohydrates. Okay. If you are mesomorph, very muscular, uh, I would put you on about 200 grams of carbohydrates. Same amount of protein. This is... Uh, 200 carbs, 200 protein. If you're mesomorphic, but you're very active, I would increase this from three to 500. If you're extremely active, you can go as high as 500. If you train twice a day, on top of that, you have some kind of physical activity in your job, you possibly need even uh, uh, 500. If you're mesomorph, but you're very inactive, then you should stay at the two to 300 uh, grams of carbohydrates range. If you're ectomorph, very high metabolism, very hard gainer, you can really uh, gain uh, muscle mass for the life of you. Probably some of that protein that you're taking, your body is converting into the carbohydrate for that energy that is needed, so your body doesn't have enough protein building material. That's why you should go as high as 500. This is just, you know, general like this overview, because goal of this DVD is uh, I want each and every one of you to come up with exact diet by the end of the uh, DVD. So we were talking about protein intake, important to have sufficient amount of amino acids floating in our uh, system 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that at any time we have amino acids or protein available for all the physiological and metabolic needs. I establish one gram per pound, for average person, if you are the bodybuilder, competitor, you should go higher. So endomorphic, as I said, can go, I'm sorry, uh, there was 200 grams of protein, one gram per pound, and as I suggested, up to one and a half gram of protein, that's 300 grams of protein. If you're endomorph, you're not training, bodybuilding is not your interest, you just want a healthy diet, 200 grams of protein. If you're endomorph, but you still want to try to build some muscle, not necessarily to compete, but you know, want to get some uh, muscle going on, 300 grams of protein. If you're endomorph and you really want to become a professional bodybuilder, you can go as high as 400 grams of protein. So we are talking about endomorphic person, has a, a trouble losing weight. It can take 100 grams of carbohydrates and between two and 400 grams of protein. 400 if you want to be competitor at the sooner, sooner the better, the fastest possible time, 400 grams. If you are just a, a bodybuilder that trains and want to have adequate amount, 300. And if you're just the average person that doesn't necessarily need to compete or build muscle, uh, just want to have a healthy diet, 200. That's endomorphic. We are moving on to the next person. Uh, mesomorph. So those are the bodybuilders kind of blessed, you know, genetically that uh, from their parents, they got the genes to be very muscular to begin with. The, the, those uh, are lucky ones. But uh, as I usually start with 50% uh, protein, 50% carb for all of my uh, clients, uh, if uh, you're just mesomorphic, 
but you don't have a competitive goals, you don't even really you know, train, you're just an average person but want to get in shape, uh, 200 grams of carbohydrates for start with the 200 grams of protein. If you, however, want to become a, a bodybuilder, start training, you can go one and a half gram of protein. So now mesomorphic person is going to take 300 grams per pound. I mean, 300 grams a day, one and a half gram per pound. And if you are uh, really thinking of competing, uh, then you should go as high as two grams of protein per pound, 400 grams of protein total daily. If you're ectomorph and you have a really uh, hard time gaining uh, a muscle mass, I would say that immediately you should start with a one and a half gram of protein per pound. And uh, you know, very soon I uh, believe you're gonna realize that that's not enough. So even ectomorphic person is gonna go immediately to the same range, three, 400 grams of protein. As you can see, the difference is in the carbohydrate. Ectomorphic is gonna have a, so much more carbohydrates, but the uh, uh, amount of protein, as you see, pretty much all three types would have a, between three and 400 if they are training. If they're not really interested in a muscle mass increase, they're just sanitary individuals that uh, do the normal job, uh, one gram of protein per pound could be sufficient. That's a, a protein intake. Uh, carbohydrate intake for a mesomorph is, is if active a mesomorph, you should take between three and 500, inactive between two and 300. So how do we do this really practically? when I do the diet for somebody. Let's say that ideally we have a minimum five meals a day. That's a minimum. It can be actually much more. And I do prefer to have more than five meals a day. So here would be protein, carbohydrates, and fat. If you take in consideration 200 grams, then uh, five meals a day would be 40 grams of protein, right? However, if it's 300 grams, there will be 60 grams of protein. And if it's 400 grams of protein a day, that would equal to 80 grams of protein per meal. Here is now another problem. There is a myth going around that uh, only 30 grams of protein is a magic number can be assimilated in one sitting. And that's exactly what I said, myth. There is no, absolutely no proof of anything like this. But I heard it so many times, I have to mention it because I'm sure that this is coming. How much can you know, a human body assimilate in, in one sitting? I certainly don't want to recommend necessarily to take 80 or more. But uh, to answer that question, absolutely positively. Body can assimilate any amount. As I was talking you know, before, what happens with that protein? Your body has to break it down. And it's hours long process, unless it's some dietary supplement like whey protein that is much quicker. But your body has to process this, you know, break down, digest, assimilate and everything else. And this is a long process. So when you eat that 80 grams, let's say, of protein or let's say steak and eggs in the morning, it will take you hours before your body's gonna get amino acids from that protein. So don't be alarmed and say, whoa, that's too much. But to make uh, uh, something much easier for everyone, if your required amount is high, 400 grams of protein, then obviously five meals is not enough. We can maybe add in between a few more. And ideally for this, I would have, a, let's say, a 50, 60 grams of protein and have additional meals in between, which could be protein shakes, meal replacement drinks, anything uh, that is convenient for you that you know it's possible and realistic to expect that you can maintain so many, let's say, five solid meals and two, three, four shakes. So uh, if you're going with the 400 grams of protein as an extreme, that's professional bodybuilders and anybody that is considering competing, and getting really a, a lot of lean muscle tissue in the shortest period of time, high amount of protein up to two grams per pound is what I recommend. 
Uh, if it's uh, uh, 400 grams of protein, let's say we would have uh, 50 grams in eight meals. So we can add it like the seven, I mean six, seven, eight. I'm uh, hoping that I'm not losing you here. Eight meals, 50 grams of protein each meal. 50, 50, 50, 50, so on, all the way to the end. That is extreme. That is the hardest case scenario. 200 is much easier, as we said before. 300 in between. I'm going with the hardest. It's going to be really easy for you to adjust the number. So if you do want to be a professional bodybuilder and beat Ronnie Coleman next year, you want to, uh, besides qualifying and all that stuff, that's uh, not really uh, that complicated to do. This is more complicated. 400 grams each and every day, con uh, continuously, constantly, this is what's going to get your results. This is not something you can do one day and then have two days off, three days on, two days. Protein is constant. I mentioned that uh, for many years, I was on 500 grams of protein daily, continuously for 20 years. And today, as we speak, I'm still on 500 grams of protein. My protein intake doesn't change. Carbohydrate and fat changes. Pre-contest, off-season, doesn't matter when, protein intake is constant. And uh, for you, if you want to be a competitive bodybuilder and you want to go 400 grams of protein, find the easiest way how you can intake 400 grams, 400 grams of protein in, let's say, eight meals. I was talking about various protein sources. Uh, interestingly, a good friend of mine is Charles Polikin, a great strength coach, uh, not one of the best, I do believe, the best strength coach uh, in the world, and he's also a nutritionist, and uh, he does a lot of tests for various athletes. Uh, interestingly, he tested for food allergies in you know, several uh, athletes, and what uh, was really disturbing to find out uh, athletes get allergic to exact food they are eating constantly and continuously. So, for example, uh, I was tested, and uh, at that period of time I was on high uh, protein intake, and um, my protein uh, choice was ma mainly chicken, and I tested allergic to chicken. I stopped uh, taking chicken for a while, and three weeks later, I went back and uh, I show no allergy you know, for a chicken. However, I was now allergic to beef, as I was eating beef constantly. And then the uh, same process happened, is every time that I would get off a certain food, you know, I would uh, normalize. But then I tried to do something uh, different. I uh, start mixing the proteins. And to this day, I do believe that this is the best, the most logical uh, way of doing it. I would have a different protein source every time. So uh, let's say I would start with egg whites, then would have a chicken, then would have a fish, then would have a, you know, some steak, let's say, dairy product, cottage cheese, or you know, some form of casein and so on. And in between I would have a protein shakes. Even protein sh shakes I would vary. I would take uh, whey, fast uh, absorbing protein post-workout when I need quick amino acids. And I would go from whey concentrate to whey isolate to whey hydrolysate, different uh, types of whey. Uh, high molecular weight, uh, uh, low molecular weight, doesn't matter. It's always mixing. So you never let body adapt to anything. So source of protein would be uh, different throughout the day. And I solved my problem in a sense of uh, you know, food allergies. So as we're designing now, diet for everyone, everyone, consider this. Instead of just chicken, 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 try to mix and uh, uh, match. Go with uh, different kinds of protein all the time. Turkey breast, very good source. Uh, wild game, phenomenal. Ostrich, uh, buffalo, uh, emu. Uh, there's many great, great uh, sources, uh, many different uh, uh, seafood uh, choices. So high Protein intake is uh, what I believe the biggest problem for all of us. Uh, training is uh, not as, uh, as uh, demanding. The biggest problem that I have with many athletes is following the diet and maintaining high amounts of protein day in and day out. So this is really, if you want to be a competitive bodybuilder, uh, this is the must. 
minimum three to four hundred, and I would say go with four hundred. I really believe that two grams of protein per pound is what the, it takes. So that's uh, protein intake. Carbohydrates, as we were uh, talking about, uh, we take it as energy demand. In the morning, as soon as we wake up, of course, there was a certain amount of hours that we were sleeping, we were inactive, and at that time, our body would, as we sleep, still use energy, deplete our glycogen storage, so we would wake up in the morning, and uh, more than likely, we would have a low energy due to six or eight hours of use of glycogen as we were sleeping. So first, I would take some complex starchy carbohydrates in the morning to give us some sustained energy. And uh, as this is a, a complex starchy carbohydrate, I would do for all three types, regardless, mesomorphic, ectomorphic, anamorphic, we still wake up and we need some energy. Okay. Throughout the day now, uh, things change. Endomorphic don't have a enough uh, allowance. They only have 100 grams of carbohydrates a day, so they don't have a much room to play with. Unfortunately, I do feel bad for them, but this is the way it is. If you take, let's say, 50 grams of carbohydrates there, there is another 50 grams that you can um, distribute somewhere. Let's say that uh, workout is about right here. Just example. Doesn't matter what it is. Maybe uh, we could consider that immediately after workout or immediately before workout, we should consider for endomorphic people adding some carbohydrates. My choice is post-workout to replenish the glycogen. So, uh, and throughout the day, no carbs whatsoever for endomorph or fibrous carb carbs, green leafy vegetables. Uh, ectomorphic, uh, they are in a high carbohydrate demand, so they do need pretty much carbohydrate in each and every meal. They're lucky ones. They can eat really as much as they want. So ectomorphic uh, uh, can uh, structure this, what we were talking about, 500 grams of protein, even uh, 500 grams of carbohydrates, even more throughout the whole day. Uh, mesomorphic bodybuilders, depending if they train once a day or twice a day, we can now manipulate and structure always uh, first thing in the morning, a uh, little bit before the workout. I like to uh, use it during the workout and absolutely necessary immediately after the workout. To complete the diet program, I want to summarize now everything I talked about so far. Secrets of the pros diet. We said one gram of protein per pound of body weight for everyone. Each and every one of you guys, one gram of protein per pound, that's it. If you are athlete, you can go up to one and a half gram. And if you're a bodybuilder, especially competitor, trying to put as much muscle mass, you go two grams of protein per pound of body weight. Carbohydrates, choices, complex starchy, complex fibers, as simple carbohydrates. Complex starchy carbs, are taken in the morning or before physical activity, before energy demand. Starchy complex carbohydrates give us slow, sustained energy. It's polysaccharides. So think about this. You take it before some activity. When? In the morning when you wake up or before uh, uh, physical activity. Fibrous carbohydrates, vegetables, anytime. No limit, everybody all the time, no limit. Why? Fiber cannot be digested. Actually, body is gonna use a lot of energy trying to digest it. It gives us a lot of uh, fiber needed, you know, to eliminate uh, certain things. And uh, for that reason, it's absolutely positively free for all, anytime, as much as you want. Simple carbohydrates or sugars only during and or after the workout. As we were talking about replenishing of glycogen, simple carbohydrates only at that time. So again, carbohydrate can be simple and complex, complex, starchy or fibrous, starchy when we need the energy, sustain slow energy, that's when we take it. Sources like potato and rice and pasta and 
you know, stuff like this, grains, uh, uh, anything like this, it's before physical activity. Fibrous carbohydrates, anytime, more better. And finally, simple carbohydrates, even though they were having a bad name and bodybuilders would not use absolutely, especially in 70s and 80s. And early 90s, everybody was staying away from sugars in the middle of 90s, and now everybody does take simple carbohydrates when, during, and after the workout for a reason of replenishing <laughs> glycogen. Finally, fat is the third macronutrient. Uh, I would say let's try to take minimal amount daily, minimal. Unless you're really on Atkins diet and you have no carbohydrates whatsoever, then you should replenish with the fat. But otherwise, if you're taking carbohydrates in the plan that I just presented, fat should be minimal throughout the day because it's hidden in all protein sources. Chicken, fish, steak, anything like this has hidden fat. And normally, uh, mostly would be saturated fat, unfortunately. Only fish. As, uh, also have a, you know, some hidden fats have uh, essential fats in it, but other than that, uh, beef, uh, anything else, mostly have a saturated fat. So uh, don't take any extra fat unless it's essential fat. Essential fats, omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids are physiologically needed. Essential means our body cannot produce, and that's why we need to take. It has to be a daily you know, dietary intake of essential nutrients. So fat, to uh, summarize important issues, do not take any extra. Take just a minimal amount daily, which is usually hidden in all your high-protein meals. If you remember, you have to take 400 grams of protein. You know, absolutely necessarily in all that protein is going to be a lot of hidden fat. Uh, I would just give you examples so you don't have to go to the nutritional books and try to find uh, uh, nutritional information. Four ounces, or about 100 grams, if you're from Europe and you're on the metric system, four ounces of any kind of meat is between 20 and 25 grams of protein. Chicken breast, turkey breast, fish, steak, anything else, it's about 20 to 25 grams of protein. Now, how much fat? It can vary you know, for chicken and turkey, two, three, four grams of fat to the steak can be, you know, very high. Lean cuts of steak, the leanest is uh, London broil, that's my choice. It's four to five grams, which is very low, if you would uh, uh, admit, or go very high to 30, 40 grams of fat, and that's, uh, I think, unnecessary and the wrong choice. A lot of people would tell me, with the, oh, how about cheeses? Yes. Cheese uh, has some protein, yes, but uh, unnecessary too much fat. And don't forget, you need to take 400 grams of protein, right? But only minimal amounts of fat, let's say maximum 100. So you cannot take some nutrients that is 50% protein, 50% fat, because by the time you would have a 400 grams of protein, it would be way too much fat. So you have to be you know, choosing that, yes, you can have a little bit, but not too much. Uh, Total amount of macronutrients, protein, fat, and carbs are what is important. I don't want to talk about calories. Calories are just final number at the end that you can multiply for you to understand where you are. But 400 grams of protein is a must, and no more than 100 grams of fat would also be a must. So choose your proteins uh, uh, very carefully. As I was talking about the fat, uh, we talked about essential fats. They are omega-3, alpha-linolenic acid, and omega-6, linoleic acid. It's uh, physiologically needed in a minuscule amounts, fortunately, so we don't need to really take a huge amounts. But as body needs it, body should get it. So make sure you take some, and the best sources would be fish oils, you know, and one of those protein meals I would you know, prefer if it's a fish meal. Therefore, you're going to have a good amino acids coming from fish and also essential fats coming from fish oils. Uh, let's say Udo's Choice Oil. Uh, I'm not endorsing uh, any products here, but Udo Erasmus is really a world, uh, um, world-class uh, expert, and he wrote a book, Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, 
uh, that's popular Udo's Choice oil that I would say is the best oil out there. So if you never tried it, you know, please do so. It's an excellent source of omega-3, omega-6 uh, uh, fatty acids. Uh, omega-6, uh, okay, flax uh, seed oil is also a good choice for omega-3. Omega-6 would be uh, sunflower, uh, safflower oil as well, uh, canola oil. And uh, omega-6, fortunately, a lot of Americans and uh, people in Europe take a sufficient amount anyway, so that's not uh, really true worry, but omega-3 3 is. I have uh, some people that are just strictly against any kind of saturated fats. Saturated fats are still needed. Hormones are made out of uh, 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 saturated fats, so we do need some. And we have this argument that people will say, we need it, and some people know absolutely we don't. We do need small amounts, but that amount is already in, as I say, hidden uh, in all the protein sources that we are taking. So uh, omega-3, omega-6, please do it. If you uh, don't take the in oil form, there are some capsules form, dietary supplements available. But uh, this would uh, get us to our final chapter of this uh, <clears throat> Secrets of the Pro Diet that I want to, together with you now, structure a diet for all of you, including myself. Uh, we were talking about small frequent meals throughout the day. And I say preferably in a minimum five to let's say as much as 12. If you can really eat every hour, so be it, that's even better. Uh, one thing that I didn't really discuss in the details but I'm going to mention right now, there are two t very important things that uh, uh, we should consider. One is thermic effect of food or feeding and thermic effect of exercise. Uh, so uh, thermic effect of uh, 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 food or feeding is calories that our body is going to use trying to process some kind of food. So first uh, I want to say is like if you have a 200 or 2,000 or any amount of calories in one sitting or have identical food in identical amount in let's say two sittings because we have a two times that we take uh, uh, the certain amount of food, thermic effect of feeding is going to be higher in two meals in, uh, rather than one, even though we are taking identical food. So, for example, if you take uh, twin brothers or sisters, or let's say it's a triplets, and the parents would feed uh, exact food, exact because they love their kids, uh, Exactly the same, so they give them the same choices and same amounts. And one uh, would take old food, whatever that might be, in one sitting, and a second in three, and a third one in five. The uh, kid with the five meals is going to have the best nutritional benefits, is going to lose the most amount of body fat, and they're going to have a you know, best absorption of all the nutrients. And besides this, because of elevated thermic effect of feeding is going to, like I said, lose most uh, weight. And that's, uh, you know, one thing that uh, a lot of uh, you probably, uh, people that uh, purchase this uh, DVD, you want to lose weight. So this is that uh, one little trick. Every time we eat, our metabolism increases. And that's why I was talking about, you know, five meals are much better than one or two or three, because every time we eat, something happens. Imagine if I just swallowed this pen right now, something is going to happen. The body is not just going to let it go. It's going to try to process, digest, and eliminate. And in that process, a lot of calories are going to be burnt. So if you have the same amount of food and same choices for three uh, you know, different kids, and we take at once, a lot of it is going to go to waste. And you know, it's going to be only one time elevation of metabolism due to feeding. If you have a five times, there's going to be five time during that day elevation of metabolism due to this uh, you know, feeding process that the body is going to try to uh, uh, absorb everything. So that's why we are going with the frequent small meals to elevate thermic effect of feeding. Also, macronutrients 
uh, uh, all having a different uh, TEF uh, number, which, which we would say. Protein and starchy fibrous complex carbohydrates have the highest thermic effect of eating, and uh, fat have the lowest. So that's why also the diet that bodybuilders are, are using and the diet that I'm recommending to you, which is high in protein and high in fibrous carbohydrates, is also for that reason, for high thermic effect of feeding. Thermic effect of exercise obviously means exactly this, uh, that uh, our body, as we exercise, we are physically active, is burning more calories. You know, so that thermic effect uh, from the more the better exercises, instead of being couch potato, doing some computer work, or not really uh, doing anything physical. Those are the two um, aspects how a person can lose weight, these two. Uh, I'm going to digress from uh, uh, our Secrets of the Pro diet just for one very important reason, I do believe, because, as I said, some of you guys are here to learn how to lose weight. And I feel obligated to explain one thing as uh, in the last 15 years I've seen over and over people making the same cardinal mistake. And this is uh, what is needed to be explained. Uh, let's say that uh, your best friend, or your fiance, or uh, your sister want to lose some weight. And uh, she wants to lose a considerable amount of weight because she's overweight due to her, you know, habits in last, uh, let's say, a part of her life. So logically, don't blame her. Everybody does it. Uh, most of the people, and mostly ladies, believe in order to lose weight, right, they need to eat less. The minimal amount they eat, the better. That's their thinking. Believing that, oh, if I don't eat, I'm going to lose. So let's say that the average, average lady that would have a, let's say, 2,000 calories metabolic rate. What does that mean? Metabolic rate means that uh, this is how many calories that person is going to use throughout the day without losing or gaining. That's their maintenance level. There is so-called basic metabolic rate. That's uh, how much uh, calories are burnt in a, uh, if a person is resting. And then everything you do throughout the day is adding to it. That thermic effect of feeding, thermic effect of uh, exercise, all add to the BMR, basic metabolic rate. But uh, uh, let's say 2,000 calories is the uh, amount of calories that that person burns daily including everything, BMR and all her activities. So today, tomorrow, next day, every single day, if this person needs 2,000, she's going to maintain the same level. So as I said now, uh, they want to lose weight. So they believe, I'm just going to stop eating. I'm going to eat very little. I'm going to go down to, let's say, okay, 1,500 or 1,000 calories. Let's go for drastic, not just 15. Let's go for 1,000, as I've seen many ladies do that. So first day, she's going to do this, and second day, and third day, and fourth, and so on. And within a week or a couple of weeks, she's going to uh, stand on the scale and say, yes, this diet is working. I'm losing weight. This is great. So obviously, they're accomplishing something. They believe that this is the right diet. Well, what happens here? First day, her body needs 2,000 calories, and she has only uh, 1,000 intake. Well, on this day, particular day, body is missing 1,000 calories. It's going to take it from somewhere. So your body is going to go into the energy reserve. There is body fat as energy reserve, and the glycogen is an energy reserve. Glycogen is stored in the liver and the muscle, and that's a carbohydrate, if you remember, stored you know, for emergency situation. And here it is. Emergency situation, 1,000 calories are missing. We got to get it. So body breaks down uh, glycogen. If you remember, there was one gram of glucose and 2.7 milliliters of water. Well, body's going to break that glycogen molecule, use the glucose as energy, and release the water. 
So if you step on the scale right there and then, you're going to be lighter because a lot of water is gone. I will be honest and say that it's not going to be all thousand calories they're missing coming out of glycogen only. Some body fat at that time would be also used. But what else? Muscle tissue. Muscle tissue, your body is going to try to break it down and uh, uh, get rid of it to find this 1,000 calories they're missing today. So after one day, uh, that person is going to lose some weight, 100% for sure. I'm going to give her that. Next day, she does the same. Again, 1,000 calories are missing. And the next day, and the next day. And in that process, you know, body is going to now be in survival mode. What that means? Body senses that there is a big discrepancy. There is a 1,000 calories missing. And at this pace, if 1,000 calories is missing every day, body would eventually die. Because energy is need, needed for, the, for life. And every day, if it's missing, and her body is using 2,000 daily, that's her metabolic rate, only 1,000 is taken, body would eventually get in so much trouble and, and would die. And survival mode means that now body wants to adapt. Body is always the best adaptive mechanism. So first day, second day, third, 1,000 calories are missing. The only way the body is going to you know, try to survive is to adapt to this new metabolic rate. And uh, body is going to start dropping metabolic rate. It's going to need less because less is given. So after several days or several weeks, now body is going to adapt to a thousand calories. So now no longer this person can eat 2,000 calories and not gain and not lose weight. He's going to have to adapt and understand that right now 1,000 calories is her new you know, metabolism, metabolic rate. If she eats more, she's going to gain weight. If she eats less, which happens here, she's going to lose. She absolutely lost some weight here in this process. Yes. But a lot of uh, this is water. Water is the main loss. Some body fat and a lot of muscle. Why muscle? This is uh, what happened. Let's say that this is one pound of fat. Everything in the body, all the organs, all the tissues, have so-called metabolic activity. You know, body needs a certain amount of calories for each part to survive. One pound of fat, whatever is located in our body, needs to be maintained nine calories a day. In 24 hours, our body is going to use nine calories out of all the food that we are eating to maintain this one pound of fat. One pound of muscle tissue, let's say, needs 69 calories daily. So to maintain this muscle tissue, our body needs seven times more than uh, you know, maintaining the fat. If you were ever wondering, this is why bodybuilders can eat 5,000 calories daily, as I said, for 20 years, I'm eating 500 grams of protein, 500 grams of carbohydrates, which is 4,000 calories right there, with additional 100 grams of fat. I've been on 5,000 calories, you know, forever. And, uh, you know, as I uh, uh, can say again, I did this quite some time to be a show-off. This is my condition at any time, right? This is uh, why, because I have a lot of muscle tissue, and muscle tissue needs calories, to be maintained. So what happened here? If every day this person would just lose the body fat, it would be very inefficient. If uh, a body loses one pound of fat, it's saving only nine calories daily. But body is missing 1,000. So body re recognizes if I lose one pound of fat, I'm only saving nine calories. But if I drop one pound of Muscle, I save it considerable amount of calories. So in this process, as I was saying, as body is adapting to the new metabolic rate, a lot of muscle loss, water loss, and little of a fat loss occurred. The problem is that now here, this person is stuck. 
Next day, next day, next day, every day now, this person, lady, that wants to lose weight desperately, is eating only 1,000 calories, but is not dropping another ounce. And in this desperate uh, 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 desire to lose more weight, that person decides to go even lower, to let's say 500 calories. And what happens? In the next few days, again, that person loses some additional weight, but eventually, same thing happens. So metabolism goes from 2,000 down to 1,000, and then another little loss, and then boom, same thing happened. Every day now, on 500 calories, you cannot lose an ounce because body adapt to this as well. So we are all just human beings. Eventually, you know, that person will say, well, to the hell with this diet. I had it. After all this suffering, I'm stuck and not much happened. And if this person at this point would do the body composition test, even though she could drop 30, 40, 50 pounds, uh, the body fat level would not be dramatically reduced. Muscle tissue would be dramatically reduced. But as this uh, uh, metabolic activity of a lean muscle tissue is so important, as I was saying, uh, every pound of muscle we have it would require an extra 69 calories uh, a day to maintain this tissue. So imagine if you lose 10 pounds of muscle, that 690 calories now that your body needs less. So if this lady lost 10 pounds of muscle in this process, yes, she would need 700 calories less daily anyway. That's why her metabolic rate is so low anyway. But was I was saying, after some period of time, she's going to just say, well, I'm just going to go back to my normal diet. This is what I've been eating for quite so many years, and I didn't gain, I didn't lose. I was always happy. I eat 2,000 calories and I'll be fine. Well, now she's going to go and eat exact food that she was eating here. All of a sudden, boom, she's going to start gaining tremendous amount of fat. Obviously, logically, her metabolic rate now is only 500, and if she eats 2,000, is 1,500 calories too many? Her body needs only 500. It's given 2,000. 1,500 is now surplus. It's too much, so body is going to store it, and stores in a fat. So several weeks after this, on this kind of diet, this person is ready to commit suicide. And this is that yo-yo dieting, and this is what happens to so many. And if uh, you know some of the dieters that did this, and your friends, uh, relatives, and, and loved ones, please explain them this, because that never works. It's catastrophic and, uh, and puts uh, people in a, you know, bad uh, a physical, mental uh, state and everything else. And beside, this is unhealthy, not to speak that uh, that uh, is malnutrition, and uh, as you know, nutritional deficiency is a cause of so many diseases nowadays. So really, uh, beside aesthetically uh, look that we want to achieve, for our health reasons, this kind of diet is uh, it's horrible. This is the worst thing that anybody can do to themselves. Malnutrition, please stop anybody that is doing this. Because like I said here, uh, they work so hard, they diet, they starve, they suffer, and the result is catastrophic. So body is going to just start gaining fat, gaining fat, gaining fat, and gaining fat. So how can this lady, your sister or fiance, anybody, actually lose weight if her metabolic rate is 2,000 and she wants to you know, drop? Obviously, this does not work. But remember what I was saying about muscle tissue. Muscle is the best fat burner. You want to burn body fat, build some muscle. As I said, bodybuilders and physically active people, athletes that have a lot of muscle tissue, can eat so many calories and never gain weight. Why? Because of physical, uh, uh, about uh, metabolic activity of lean tissue. If I would implant, let's say, 10 pounds of lean tissue under the skin to that person, she's going to immediately have a 700 calories more metabolic rate, 
So her body is going to need 2,700. So if she eats only 2,000 like she was eating here, 700 is going to be used from energy reserve. The only way this uh, person is going to successfully get in shape, lose body fat, is if she increases metabolism. And metabolism can be increased, as we talk about here, with the thermic effect of exercise. Let her exercise as often as much as possible. Have her be physically active. And thermic effect of feeding, as we were talking about, right choices, protein and fibrous complex carbohydrates, vegetables, and frequent meals. To boost everybody's metabolism, that's the way to do it. So we were talking about five possible meals, or maybe ten. Always remember, the more the better. Every time you eat, metabolism increases, so it's your interest. If you can be so specific and so determined and disciplined to have 10, 20 meals a day. I know some people that take every hour, they would take a meal. Wonderful. A few bites. Protein and fibrous complex carbohydrates, they would get in shape in no time. So to boost metabolism, which is <laughs> desire of probably 90% of the people that are watching this DVD, to increase the metabolism, uh, you can do it with the increasing thermic effect of exercise and thermic effect of feeding. Number one is more physical activities. Train, train, train. Uh, in the DVD, you can see correct way to train. For ladies, don't be afraid of weight resistance training. Absolutely, positively, you can lift the weights. You're going to burn some calories in process, but what you're going to do, you're going to build some lean tissue and that lean tissue is going to, in turn, make you burn more body fat daily. Do not be afraid to uh, train. Uh, we we're going to have a special offer here with the uh, uh, Secrets of the Pro DVDs that I have uh, my wife, Milamar Flores, offering her a training video. Also, you know, look for that special. But I'm going to go back to uh, what we are talking about here. Ladies always believe that, oh, if I... Pick up the dumbbells, I'm going to look like you, Milos. I'm going to be big, so I don't want to train. Please believe me, that doesn't happen overnight. Uh, if, if that was the, the case, you know, all the guys uh, you know, around you would look like me. So building the lean tissue is not an overnight process. And ladies, if you guys train specifically, and there's information on my DVD here and also on my wife's, there are uh, different muscle fibers, fast twitch muscle fiber and slow twitch muscle fiber. Slow twitch endurance fiber uh, is not going to you know, uh, give you that uh, size. It's going to give you muscle shape, definition, muscle tone, but it's not the one that uh, creates a volume. That's a fast twitch muscle fiber for bodybuilders. If you train specifically, as explained on a DVD, we get the stimulation, we uh, stimulate fast switch muscle fibers with the proper nutrition, we're going to cause hypertrophy or growth. If you train slow switch muscle fiber, that's not going to happen. So for ladies, please don't avoid weight resistant training. That's a wrong thing to do. Cardiovascular activity is great. Yes, please do it. But cardiovascular activity is catabolic activity. It can make you lose muscle tissue. And as, if you remember, muscle is our friend, not enemy. Friend in sense of high metabolic activity of this would cause you to lose a lot of calories daily. You know, so uh, you know, for uh, final uh, secrets of the pro, pro's diet, I have to say this about the weight loss, but secrets of the pro, pro's diet, number one would be frequent small meals. Frequent small meals. Number one. Number two is high protein intake and protein in every meal. High protein intake in every meal. Do you remember one gram of protein per pound minimum up to two grams of protein you know, for each. Uh, number three, fibrous carbohydrates, vegetables, anytime. Anytime. The more the better. For people that want to lose weight, gain weight, want to do anything, get pretty, doesn't matter what they want to do, fibrous carbohydrates, anytime. Essential fats added. Excuse me. 
small, minuscule amount, of course, needed, but please, if it's essential, that means needed. So take it. And carbohydrate, carbs, taken as demanded. This is one thing that each and every one of you guys is going to have to be honest to yourself and find appropriate amount. Uh, it's not that difficult to do. It's not that difficult to do. As I said, many of you guys, I don't know who you are. I don't know individually your body type, your physical activity and everything. But seriously, this program would work for everyone if you consider. And here we go. Final chapter of this diet. Eight meals for everyone. Protein has to be included in every meal. All of us need it. I need two grams per pound. If you need minimum one gram per pound, that's okay. Let's try to be eight meals a day, all of us. If you remember, I said different protein sources. Let's go with egg whites. I think it's common for everyone. Let's go with a one steak meal. Red meat, so a lot of people are going to say, oh my God, lean cuts of, let's say, uh, London broil. It's very low fat, four grams or five grams of fat in four ounces. That's nothing. Because steak has a, a, such a long time to be uh, processed, I like to take it later in a day. And usually at the time when I have a less carbohydrates, which is at nighttime, that's when I have a higher fat protein source. So let's he say here. It can be even the last meal. So egg whites here, beef. Chicken is common, right? Let's say any meal here, chicken breast. Turkey, I don't know if you heard about all this uh, tryptophan, amino acid that is relaxing, and a lot of people are using a supplemental tryptophan to put you to sleep. Turkey has a, you know, higher amount. It could be a good choice. Turkey at night, okay? Fish throughout the day. Sushi is ideal. Raw fish, let's put it right here. Fish. Now we have uh, several other choices. If our workout was, let's say, maybe right here, this protein choice would be whey. Whey protein. Why whey protein? Because it's such a fast absorbing protein. 20 minutes after intake of whey, we're going to get all the amino acids available, and boom, we're going to have it in the bloodstream when we need it. If you remember post-workout period, we need quick amino acids, quick glucose, everything to be replenished. So here we have a two more choices. We can have a, some dairy product, milk, cottage cheese, yogurt, something like this, or we can have a protein shake. Uh, mixture, I would say, let's say, uh, combination of proteins. Uh, many, I'm not going to endorse any products right now. I'm just going to tell you, at your convenience, at your preference, take protein that is mixed with uh, whey, casein, uh, egg white, even soy, doesn't matter, mixtures of protein together. So mixed protein powder, okay? And let's say this can be again repeated here, or have some milk product, dairy product, cottage cheese, non-fat cottage cheese is an excellent source of uh, uh, protein. So if you ask me, this would be ideal protein intake for each and every one of you guys. Ideal. If you can do 100%, do as close as possible. But uh, if you want to really have a Secrets of the Pros, Milos, Shach of diet, that would be about the choice. Now, its only difference is amounts. For example, I need 200, uh, 500 grams of protein as I'm 250 pound guy, two grams per pound, I'm competitive bodybuilder. 500 grams of protein in eight meals, I need uh, 65 grams of protein a meal. Somebody else needs much less. Take whatever is needed. Remember, four ounces of any meat, 
is about 20 to 25 grams of protein, so it's easy to uh, determine. What would this kind of protein intake ensure? We're going to have a amino acids from all these protein meals floating in a, a blood system, so any time our body needs it, it's there. We need to replenish red blood cells, it's there. Hair, muscle, heart, doesn't matter. When there's a need for amino acids, that's what happens. We have it. If you don't have enough amino acids available due to lack of dietary protein we take, our body has to break down the muscle tissue to get those amino acids needed. Don't do it. To the rest of your life, protein is a must. I'm also an anti-aging specialist. And what is anti-aging? Why do we age? We age for exact reasons, what I was talking about, slowing metabolism, changing your body composition. Uh, average person becomes less physically active due to now obligations and jobs and act activities. They have to do it on a daily basis. So they're not as physically active as uh, when they were younger. They continue with uh, bad eating habits, so they start gaining weight. And in the process, as they gain weight, they lose muscle tissue, metabolism slows down, and that's a casket to, to have us age. To prevent aging is exactly this. Maintain the lean muscle tissue. If you maintain the lean muscle tissue, you're going to have a first and most important step of anti-aging. You're going to prevent decline in metabolism and decline in a, a lean muscle tissue. And that is going to be possible if you have a high protein intake. It's healthy, and this is the way to do it. We talked about uh, some medical experts saying, oh my god, that's too much protein. Don't abuse the protein. It's going to be uh, 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 deleterious to your health. It's going to be you know, horrible for your you know, liver and, uh, and, uh, and uh, kidneys, renal, hepatic toxicity, all this kind of stuff. Not at all. That's a nonsense. Uh, medical experts will talk about high protein intake uh, should be avoided in case you have some renal uh, troubles. If your kidneys are not healthy, then yes, but this is very seldomly the case. Healthy individual that is uh, physically active, it's breaking down the muscle, uh, the muscle tissue due to the uh, extreme physical activities. You're losing amino acids much more than average person. You need more protein. So that is the must. And we had the energy, nutrients, either carbohydrates or fat. As I didn't discuss too much about the uh, uh, Atkins kind of diet, ketogenic diet, high fat and no carbs. Let's assume, just for the sake of argument, to not to take any uh, carbohydrates. We need energy, so uh, body will take you know, fat. And uh, for some of you guys that try that kind of diet, I would actually periodically do this for two, three weeks. I will lower the carbs and you know, replace my uh, dietary uh, energy from uh, fat sources. Uh, you have to find the amount of fat needed to take you through the day for your uh, metabolic activity, not to make you gain or lose weight. So carbs are not uh, allowed, therefore you can replace with fats. If you do that kind of diet, replace with the healthy fats, with the nuts, with the avocado, olives, you know, uh, you know, fish oils, healthy fats, yes. But not in this DVD. We're going to make a specialized DVD for that. Uh, for the uh, secrets of the pros diet that we uh, discussed so far, we chose carbohydrates as a preferable source of energy. Fat, as we said, it's minimal. Minimal, it's hidden in. Okay, egg whites have no fat whatsoever. But many of you guys can maybe throw in one or two egg yolks. And each egg yolk is like six grams of fat. So you're going to have some fats in the first meal. Mixed protein powder usually has zero fat. Great. Chicken breast has some fat. Saturated fats, well, not much, but has some. So remember, we are not really taking fat, but it's hidden in here, in here, in here, in here, everywhere. So fat is hidden in all our protein sources, except egg whites, which is zero. And in the fish oils, 
we have a considerable amount of good fat fish oils. So uh, that's uh, you know very good uh, choice, and I would really encourage you to have a fish meal. So as far as fat, we keep the minimal. Only thing that I would suggest is add essential fats. Essential fat, flaxseed oil, or what I said before, Uda's choice. Uda's choice oil, I would say, for every human being here, take a two tablespoons a day, and you're going to do yourself a great favor. Start with two. I'm not going to even go into specific for people with a higher body weight that can take more like one tablespoon for each 50 pounds of body weight, that would be my recommendation. But let's stick with the two tablespoons of Udo's choice. That's all. So fat is already covered. Protein is covered and fat is covered. And to now, each one of you, to conclude your own diet here. I don't have to help you, I'm just directing you. You're gonna find the best way most appropriate weight to structure your diet. We had a protein, we had a fat. Now only carbohydrates are important for us. Two weeks is about a good period of time that all of us can determine where is our metabolic rate. So we're gonna, for example, follow this diet for two weeks, monitor everything if you can, write it down, and by the end of every day, every week, put how much Protein, carbohydrates, fat, that's what I would do every time. And let's say you have a 400 grams of protein, 400 grams of carbs, 100 grams of fat. First week, second week, by the end of the second week, you evaluate yourself and you see, okay, I'm improving. Great. Follow the same diet. If you are gaining weight and gaining body fat, unnecessary body fat that you don't want, ooh, I have to back off from carbohydrates or fat. Obviously, I'm eating too much. My energy intake exceeds my energy expenditure. So we have to redo, recalculate, and lower either carbohydrates or fat. And another way also, if it's the opposite, if you lack energy and you're losing weight and you want to build, then of course you have to add more carbohydrates or fat. So that's something that you need to do on your own, on your own. Uh, adjust the carbohydrate and fat intake. Fat not so because it's really, we take minimal and only two tablespoons of Udo's choice. So carbohydrates are the only one that uh, you need to manipulate. What do we say about fibrous complex carbohydrates? Anytime. So anytime you want to have a fibrous complex carbohydrates, have it. You want to lose weight? You want to gain weight, you want to build muscle, doesn't matter what you want to do. Fibrous complex carbohydrates are great, great source of you know, minerals and vitamins and a fiber necessary nutrient for us. So absolutely anytime. During uh, day we have workout, that was workout. Okay, if you remember what I said for the workout during and immediately after, we can have a simple carbohydrate. Even for the ladies that want to lose weight and they're on specific diet. Now when I'm going to tell you, you want to have some sugars in your diet to lose weight, have it. You heard it from me. You're going to say, I'm out of my mind, but believe me, you can get away with the murder right here. After the workout, that sugar that you're going to have is just going to be sent right back into the muscle that you just trained to replenish the glycogen. So I give my clients a freedom to take simple carbohydrates, even the one that want to lose weight is immediately after the workout. You want oatmeal cookies, you want pancakes, you want whatever simple carbohydrate you want, that's the time to do it. You have to be careful. Not, let's say, cheesecake, because, yeah, cheesecake is simple carbohydrate, yeah. Simple carbohydrate with tons of fat, like 50 grams of fat. So be specific. When I say you can have simple carbohydrate, sugars, I didn't say simple carbs and fat. It's only sugars right here. For bodybuilders, we use uh, uh, sources like uh, dextrose, glucose, 
uh, vitargo, maltodextrin, some of the uh, carbohydrate in powder form because it's uh, more uh, available. Is it's uh, something that we do usually mixed with our whey protein, right? However, <clears throat> if somebody really wants to enjoy themselves and their diet is very strict, even competitors on competitive diet, they are trained by me. I give them the freedom of having a simple carbohydrates immediately post workout, even during the workout which uh, is explained a little bit more on my website, but also is going to be uh, explained in uh, additional DVDs that I'm going to do here with the Fit Show crew uh, of my friends that uh, decided to make this possible. I hope that uh, it's going to be some interest. We're going to be looking for the feedback. And if so, we're going to make other DVDs regarding this. But uh, to conclude, carbohydrate, that big mysterious thing for all of us, how to structure it, fibrous carbohydrates anytime, simple only here. Starchy complex carbohydrates, now it depends. If you are endomorphic, you don't have a much room, and they give you just 100 grams, for example, you can have some starchy complex carbohydrates in the first meal, right here. Oatmeal, grits, whole grain, uh, let's say, uh, toast, you know, whatever is your choice. Choose what you want. People will be like, oh my God, I can't have this. Or, if you have only 100 grams of carbohydrates, have the worst kind of carbohydrate, I don't care. This is only 100 grams, your body is going to use it. So don't be thinking, oh my God, can I uh, afford this or not? If you have 100 grams of carbs, you can afford anything. Uh, for other people that uh, need to um, watch the carbohydrate throughout the day, uh, starchy complex carbohydrates are taken before the uh, physical uh, demand. So first thing in the morning, yes, absolutely. That oatmeal or uh, bagel or toast or something like this, yeah, sounds great. It's going to give you energy for the next few hours. As your energy ran out, you replace it again. And ran out, you replace it again and again and again. That's, that is the system. You take energy as needed, like driving the car. You drive from, let's say, L.A. to uh, San Diego. You need a certain amount of gas. This is how much gas you put in. If you want to continue to Mexico and you don't have it, nothing's going to happen. So if you want to go to Mexico, then in San Diego you reload and continue. If you're going to be parked and do nothing, you don't need it. You know, this is a matter of speech that I want to explain. It's same with the body. If we are physically active, we're going to eat from here to here, and then for a couple of hours we are inactive. We don't need, you know, much, so don't take it. You can take a little bit, you know, just to hold you over, but not major amount, because if you take and your body doesn't use, it can be converted into the fat. So it's always taken as needed. And for ectomorphic, they have a high metabolism that pretty much uh, anything they eat, they can gain weight. Every one of you guys can gain weight. Don't be discouraged. Just because it's harder for you, that doesn't mean it's impossible. It is possible, but you have to pretty much eat all the time. And remember, after two weeks, evaluate your diet. And if you're on the right track, great, continue. If you are not getting results, then change it more than likely you need to increase the carbohydrates. And uh, for uh, mesomorphic bodybuilders, competitive bodybuilders, I have a great success even with the top professionals that were already at the, at the high level of development. So people would think that those guys cannot improve much from that point. They would, following the secrets of the pros diet. They need more, they want to build more muscle tissue. They have a sufficient amount of protein, and now they add carbohydrates as needed. I would usually have with the pro, top professionals two workouts a day. So we have a, two windows of opportunity to replenish all the nutrients. And always remember, body wants to be in homeostasis, it's normal state. If homeostasis is, homeostasis is affected, oops, something is out of balance, body wants to compensate. If you train 
and you lose all these nutrients, body wants to supercompensate, and that goes in, in our favor. Supercompensation means putting more, putting more. That's a hypertrophy. So speaking in numbers, let's say our body loses 10, supercompensates with 11 of whatever. Loses 20, you know, brings back 22. Loses 100, supercompensates with more. So whatever is lost, body puts more back. That's supercompensation. That's why for bodybuilders, I like to have a more of those uh, training sessions where supercompensation is uh, uh, available right after. So endomorphic, uh, very limited with carbs. They can have it only 100 grams, for example, in the morning and maybe during or after the workout. The rest, they can have a green leafy vegetables, fibers, carbohydrates, or no, fa no carbohydrates at all. Ectomorphic, that need a lot of energy, should have a starchy complex carbs all the way. And simple, you know, throughout the workout and after. Mesomorphic, depending on their activity. Uh, active mesomorph needs more, inactive a little bit less. But nevertheless, they need uh, uh, about, I would start with everyone, 50% protein, 50% carbohydrate. That's, from my experience, 20-something years into this, it's a very good guess. That's, uh, that's a very good uh, guess that uh, we start with 50-50. So if you're taking 400 grams of protein, good choice would be 400 grams of carbohydrates. After two weeks, Evaluate, you gain weight, you're happy, continue. If you didn't, uh, then of course you have to change it. Another thing that I just said, if you gain weight, well, how much weight did you gain? If you gain five pounds, then you need to adjust everything by five pounds, which is two grams per pound, additional 10 grams, right? As you progress and you gain, you have a more room to in increase amount of protein, carbohydrates, and calories. As we were talking about metabolic activity of uh, muscle tissue, so more muscle you, you have, now more is required for maintenance. So therefore, if you gain weight in a positive way, you're not gaining the body fat, you know you're doing the right thing. So here it is, that is uh, Secrets of the Pro's uh, Diet Program. I hope I didn't uh, bore you to tears with uh, too many uh, of these uh, um, infos uh, all at once, but I hope that uh, by the end of the day you can see the logic behind it. We would uh, look for a feedback. Uh, I can be reached uh, as well at uh, uh, www.miloshachev.com uh, if uh, ever needed to be uh, contacted through the FIT show. I'm part of uh, the crew. Uh, we are in process of making a lot of DVDs. You guys can give us uh, special requests and uh, I'm sure that we can accommodate you. Uh, this is uh, Secrets of the Pros uh, diet program. I uh, sincerely hope you learned something today. I hope that you're gonna try it. And if you do try it, I promise you, you're gonna succeed. So until next time, 